think that's an old school camo. I got this in the Vendors Mall in Leesburg, Kentucky. I seen this thing back early part of the spring. I almost got it and backed off. I've been here two, three times since then, backed off. And it was there all summer and everything else. I like old camo. I, I like camo too. I love these most of it too. But, uh, was there last weekend. Camo was still there. Yeah, 10 bucks, you know, for camo. Vintage camo, good shape. Got it, fit perfectly. Uh, I want to say it's probably from early 80s from uh, in the tag it says Walmart. But, uh, oh, good old camo. More of a ground camo, you know, in the brown leaves and stuff. It, it, old stuff works pretty good. Uh, pretty good find, I guess. You know, nobody bought it in $5 for the pants, $5 for the shirt. You know, you know, it was there that long, and I've been wanting it, but I just wouldn't buy it. And the ladies, I could maybe get it, so you're going to regret not getting it. And, uh, yeah, it was there for several months. Nobody got it. I got it. I'm glad I did. That's just cool old camo. And so I shared that a little bit with you. Old stuff still works. I guess I got lucky nobody bought it. And, uh, comfortable. It's 100% cotton. So I won't be good when you get wet. But other than that, be comfortable with camo. Blends in pretty good. That's back in the property, uh, Saturday evening, squirrel hunting, and uh, the squirrels even know I was there. They was, they was all over the place. But, mm, good old camo is just as good as the uh, modern day camo. Don't get me wrong, I like modern camo. I like camo, but this old stuff, you know, still has its color. It hasn't faded. New camo will fade pretty quick, so uh, yeah, that's that. That's uh, jude, jude rope from, look how fine it is. That's from putting it inside of a dryer on the old lady at home. A little bit of river birch.
my char claw come out pretty good and what that's from is one of them triangular bandages when you get hurt or whatever when I'm old ones. I cut it up and stick it in there that's charred pretty good just waiting to see how that mulling turns out alright here's some of that mulling it, it actually uh, charred as you can see There's that piffy stuff in the center of the mulling plant I've never uh, tried to char it before or I ain't even tried to punk you with it I got some punk wood to try uh, let's see if this thing will take a spark and stuff I'm guessing you can see it in there. And now we know that uh, not sure. We know that mauling with uh, char now. Excuse me. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh Molly. Probably wonder why I dumped it out. I've got plenty of it. I'm far in the field. The property I live on, the last fielder is a few big pieces. I got some punk wood I wouldn't try. So, uh, if you weren't following them, which <coughs> I got a lung full of smoke, sorry, but uh, I'm wondering if uh, mauling stock will uh, char that piffy stuff. <laughs> it does, you just seen it. Mocha, whatever done. Actually, it's good. Hot, but good. And I got me some ramen noodles, ramen noodles, depending on what part of the country you're from. Cooking. I ain't never tried these before. Chili flavored. So you're just gonna burn me up and keep my butt, or uh, it's gonna be really good. I've got sucking in here in hot water now. I'm gonna take my water and put this by the fire, help keep it warm. That way we can maybe have some cider later. I think eat breakfast, I'm kinda hungry. chance to get out a little bit early today so making some more if you see it in there making some more charred uh, punk wood see out and about bushcraft and survival out of Georgia he did a thing on uh, finding punk wood and stuff I found some while back ago and brought it here finally tried it that stuff works good things like that some char cloth try to do some squirrel hunting this morning but a couple little dogs wanted to fall along and that and the wind is blowing so it's hard to, to really see much got the hammock up camps open 
just gonna enjoy it a little while. I'll try to get home. I don't know, maybe by noon sometime. I don't know, maybe I'll be out here for a while. Who knows? Just out and about enjoying myself. Got a chance, why not, right? Just want to say, this stuff here is chili flavor ramen noodles. That's a good stuff, man. <laughs> I like it. I like it so much that it wasn't a little much. Yeah, but it's a uh, it's good. All right, <clears throat> all right, guys. As you know, early in the summer there's a tag going around of our three favorite bushcraft knives. I think about everybody in the, in the bushcraft community has done it. I got re-tagged by Casey from Coyote Works. So it's in three, instead of redoing my uh, three bush knives again and not respond to his uh, tag I figure I'd do my three survival knives one of them is my uh, Shred 42 uh, that I say would be a quarter inch thick I don't know all the specs there's a hundred million reviews of this knife on the uh, YouTube uh, comfortable knife I think it, it would be able to take a beating. I have a baton with it a little bit so I stretch that. I think it's not be pretty two different handles. Strip it down and put some burl handles in there and change the sheath to uh I like leather but I don't like this leather sheath. Anyway, this knife seems to be a tough knife. Something you don't care to beat up on. And one was also this one was also in my uh my Mize Wisdom was also in my bushcraft knives, but this is quarter inch thick of a convex, just flat out good knife. I wouldn't worry about prying it or anything like that. So that would that knife makes it in some of my survival and bush knives. And the number one, an Ontario SP5. That'd be my number one choice. Quarter inch steel. I said that one was quarter inch when it was it, but uh, it's big. You got some reach if you know if you need to do the unfortunate thing and get somebody without a handgun, you know. Got a little bit of reach. You bust out windows or split wood or whatever. It's not something you're gonna do with something like this one. Then I always always got some kind of knife big knife, pocket knife, I like big pocket knives. And that one comes from Robert from Blue Dash Bushcraft. It'd be a Gerber, that thing actually sharpens well. That's why I have a bald spot in my arm. <laughs> but nothing real fancy. Uh, this would be my number one. Number two, you know, I want something, my bush knives are, you know, fine, need to be fine work, you know, skin in. Uh, you know, all kinds of good little fine things. This one, it's, it's flat ground all the way down to zero. I mean, this thing's nasty short. Not, you know, in the, my idea of survival, I live in the country. I live pretty much in the woods. I live on 52, 54 acres plus government land where we live, where I live is, uh, I think 75% is government owned war service and park service. You know, out here in my life, for me, a survival situation would be in a city, man, where you're having to break into things, you know, <laughs> get close up to somebody, you know. That'd be my number one. I, li I like it for a woods knife, but it's not my number one woods knife. But, uh, that's that, so if you got, I don't know, different knives for, I don't know, survival situation, then, uh, your wood's knives. Go ahead and show them. I mean, they're, they're thick, they're sturdy. They'll hold it to the job. That's just just my uh, right as of right now. My three my three uh, survival knives instead of bush knives. 
here's a quick look at my forge that my friend made the main the main top the cooking area is made from a semi uh, rim they cut it out and then it's got the hole that connects this I'm not sure what this piece is to this metal hose in here that would connect to a uh, clothes dryer this part right here is a uh, 50 gallon barrel uh, dolly or old 50, gall 50 gallon barrels and you can see it's hooked up to a dimmer switch you, know, you plug in your extension cord on this side and your or however and it, it you know you just uh, power your uh, shoot having a brain fart hair dryer which would hook up here and it works pretty good we got it set up out in the woods right now to the house I have the my hand blower it's me and Robert some bluegrass bushcraft was at the uh, Renfro, Renfro Valley little village place they had and they had theirs hooked up just like mine right up to the uh, little hand thing here so to get here and see how I could do it and maybe clamp it on there but that's that's my uh, forge I haven't got an anvil or anything like that I wish I did got a little bit of river coal that we got gathered the other day but that's actually plenty for a while pretty good sized forge works good I've used it a couple times I made a mistake once getting the metal so hot that it glowed white and when it does that <laughs> it's too hot it ain't no good for nothing but uh, yeah it's just a quick look at my forge nothing super fancy but it is functional and works I just gotta figure out a way to rig up my blower probably to this or maybe back behind it a little bit I don't know maybe up where it hooks up underneath there I, I, don't, I don't know for sure yet but yeah there's a little forge it's actually a good size one and then I got my right here where I can, you know, right the coals where I need them over for the metal. But that's that.